Good afternoon and welcome to God's Heritage Evangelical Outreach, the Heritage Hour. Once again today, we are looking at the Word of God and we are asking all of us to return to God while we can. So the topic today is return to God while you can. And we are taking our reading, by the way, from Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. The prophecy of Isaiah chapter 55, verse 6. And I read, Seek ye the Lord, while he may be found. Call ye upon him, while he is near. If the Bible says we should, we should seek the Lord, why? He could be found and call upon him when he's near. It means there would be a time when he will not be near. When we will seek him and we will not find him. How do I mean? If you listen to the news, the media generally, and hear what is going on in the world. Air disaster, air crash, aircraft tumbling into the Atlantic Ocean and all the people, including the crew, will perish war here and war there natural disasters people dying in millions you could imagine what happened during the christmas period of 2005 when many people perished in the earthquake that caused tsunamis in the Aziz of indonesia and also sicknesses everywhere some of them incurable many people begin to wonder even the physicians no longer have names for diseases they call it whatever they think there will be a time when you and I will seek the Lord, but we will not find Him. There will be a time when we will call upon Him, and He will not be near to hear. And that is why the Bible is emphasizing the call today, that this is the day we will seek Him. While we have our being, while we have our reign, while we have our life in ours, is the time when we are conscious of the next moment, because you are not sure of the next one hour. You don't even know. Many people have, have had, within this year alone, I've had of about three people who just got up and they chatted on the phone or chatted on the internet or did one thing or the other with other people. And in the next minute, they were dead. Cardiac arrest. Men and women, old and young. You can say, oh, I'm just, you know, I'm still a kid, I'm, I'm a youth. <laughs> it doesn't happen to, it happens to everybody. Now, what is this emphasizing? The end time is here. Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 24, that these signs of the end must come. Wars and rumors of war, earthquake in diverse places, famines and pestilences, that's diseases and all kinds of stuff. And these are happening on daily basis. If you read also the epistles, you see where Apostle Paul is talking of, and Peter, they are talking of the evils of the end time. Men sleeping with men, women with women, people are becoming endlessly evil, even bestiality is being held, even wisdom, knowledge is increasing. Look at science proving there's no God. Well, if there's no God, let them look at the various patterns and designs of atom it, it is not let me tell you if science is honest it will tell you that nature is disastrous look at thunder does this spare you earthquake does this spare you does it create does flood why do we call it disaster why do we say natural disaster when you have tornadoes earthquake this and that it's because they don't create it is god the designer who created Look at atoms of all the invisible elements. Look at even bacteria. Take their pictures and look at after magnification how individual, every part of them has a function. In your own body, take a cell in your body, analyze it and see how structured and everything works perfectly to give you the life you have. This tells you there is God. So if somebody is saying there is no God, he is deceiving himself. When God says, I am who I am. Irrespect what it means is irrespective of what you think or believe, I remain myself. It's, it didn't say I was. It didn't say I will be. It says I am. That means 
ever present God. Ever present God. So it doesn't matter what we believe. We don't change him. We don't make him a great God when we believe him. We don't even make him a smart God if we disbelieve him. That's why he said to Moses, I am who I am. You can find in the Exodus chapter 3 verse 14. So what am I saying today? If we also go further, after Isaiah the prophet called us to seek the Lord when he will be found and call upon him when he, he is near to hear us and seek him when he will be found. He see also goes further to elaborate. If we read that verse, verse 7, that is 55, verse 6 and verse 7, you see where he's saying, let the wicked forsake their way. Let this, this, he begins to say, if you are wicked, killing people, if you are stealing, if you are robbing others, morality anyway doesn't save. But it's good that you desist from wickedness before you seek the holy God, because God is holy and nothing in him is evil. And he can never, never be aligning with evil. Seek him. Don't tell me I am a church member, I am a pope, bishop, ash doctor, reverend, pastor, evangelist. These are all titles. If they are all ending here on earth. They don't go beyond here. The question is, is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Remember in, in the book of Revelation, the Bible says in chapter 20, a book was opened and another book was opened. There is the book of life, there is also the book of condemnation or the book of judgment. Where is your own name? You go in secret and commit fornication and adultery. You sleep with men who are married, women who are married, and you think that it doesn't make it's this, it doesn't make a difference. Well, it's your life. I have to live it. It's my life. I have to live my life. It's not your life. A caretaker does not claim ownership of the building he's taking care of. God gave you life. He will take it one day. God gave you money. He will take it one day. God gave you your children. He will take them one day. God gave you all the things you think you possess, your quali academic qualifications. He gave them to you. Otherwise, when you die, let us see them bury you with, with PhD. Let us see them bury you with all the cars you have been riding in the world. Let us did, see them bury you with all your children, or all the gold and trinkets you got in the world. And what are they all? The Bible says you came naked into the world, and naked you must go. So how prepared are you to meet your God? Ask yourself that question. Seek the Lord when he will be found. Call upon him when he is near. That is it. And Jesus also continued in this to call us in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28. He said, come to me, come to me. I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody ever goes to the Father but by me. He said, come, take my yoke, it is easy. You have to take a yoke. Yes, you have to. You don't tell me, oh, well, I don't care. I'm not, I'm not religious because if you don't take the yoke of Jesus Christ, you take the yoke of Satan. There are two yokes in the world. The yoke of the world, which is mammon, and the yoke of Jesus Christ, which is life. He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody goes to the Father but by me. Therefore, you have to decide whose yoke you have to take. Many people are taking the yoke of Satan. You have been hearing of people killing their fellow human beings and cutting them in pieces. Could these same people create the body they are destroying? No. Could they create the life they have destroyed? No. Why are they doing that? They are given a yoke, a burden by the devil, and they have to accomplish the tasks of their master. They are enslaved to disaster. And this is what they have to be saved from. You may not believe it, but it's true. Listen to all over the world. Get, to, get the news. Go on in the news on a daily basis. Hear what is going on in the world and you will be marveled. Now Jesus said, take my yoke, it is easy, for I am meek and gentle. Also, I want to tell us, in the book of Epistle, second epistle of Peter, chapter three, I want us to read something about what is going on in the world, because so many people will say, well, you know what, I don't care if, um." These people have been preaching, oh, Jesus will come, Jesus will come. Oh, they are saying the, uh, the world will end, the world will end. It's, it's the same thing all the time. It doesn't happen. But I tell you, you are scornful unto death. 
Remember in Galatians chapter 6 verse 7, the Bible says, Be not ye deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, he or she must reap. If you sow corruption, you reap destruction. If you sow to the Spirit, you live, reap eternal life in Christ Jesus. Look at what Apostle Peter is writing to all the children of God. Chapter 3, second epistle, chapter of Peter, chapter 3, verse 3. He says, Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days scoffers, walking after their own lust, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continued as they were from the beginning of the creation. And is it not what you are saying now? Jesus wouldn't come. After all, who is he? And you will be here and you say, there's no hell, there's no heaven. Let me tell you, when you left home to go to somewhere today, or when you even woke up, you have to take a bed. You have to bath yourself. You have to dress up. You have to apply oil, cosmetics, whatever to make you look good. That means you prepared yourself for the day. You took time to prepare yourself to meet your guest. Or to even visit somebody. Or to go for the, that precious interview you have been waiting for. But you feel that eternity has no preparation. You feel that there is no need to prepare for eternity. It's a mistaken belief. It's a mistaken faith. Check it. If it takes you taking bed, rubbing oil, applying cosmetics, even perfume, everything, dressing up well to look good, to meet an ordinary man, how prepared are you to meet the Almighty God, the Creator of all things? That's why I said earlier that if you begin to say, people who say there is no God, so it's a simple way, it's a, in fact, it's, it's a measure, it's a defense mechanism for them to escape and continue living the life they are living. Because you can't imagine yourself doing the same thing repeatedly every day and at the same time reading the word of God which condemns you on daily basis for being a wicked man, for being a sinful man, for, you know, you won't be happy. And therefore, the best way people go about is to say there is no God. But that doesn't stop God. It doesn't stop lightning from heaven. It doesn't stop the rain, the snow, the summer sun, and all the things that God has created. No, it does not stop me and you from dying. And neither would they stop us from giving account of our lives to the, to the Maker. That's why we're calling us today. That's why the Bible is asking us to come back to Him as long as the opportunity exists. Because we might say, oh, well, I don't think I will have time for all this stuff. But then you have time now. You may not have it again the next moment. Why wouldn't we come back to Christ now? Let us pray. And brethren, I want us to think about what we've just heard because it matters that we drop all our sins ask jesus to come into our lives anew as our personal lord and savior and then we will we will receive the holy spirit and begin to live a life of holiness this is what jesus is calling us to do so let us pray in jesus name Imutu Redeemer, your word is gone forth. I will not come back the same to you until it accomplish that for which you have sent it. Here is your daughter, here is your son, Lord. On our own we can do nothing. Jesus Christ, you said in John chapter 6, verse 63, that is the spirit that weakens, the flesh profits nothing. You said the word you have spoken unto us, they are the spirit and the life. Father, O oh God, let your spirit come into our lives and transform us and renew us. And we will be sealed with the Holy Spirit in the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we will prevail in this journey, O oh God, and we will be overcomers. May your name be glorified even as you say, Lord, with the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your daughter. Thank you for your son because I know and I'm persuaded that you are meeting them at this very hour at the very points of their needs. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Brethren, make sure that you go to 
www.godsheritageevangelical.org and you will listen more to the word of God. If you go there, you can click on the audio visual or you read other you know, Bible code um, in tracts and postings there that will help to build up your faith. I will also encourage you to seek a living church where the Jesus Christ is preached, where God is preaching through the spirit and in truth. And then you will be blessed in Jesus' name. Amen.